Millions of years ago, our primate ancestors were masters in the art of hanging as we swung about in our arboreal environment. But today, where do we stand amongst our fellow animals when it comes to this once innate skill? For example, here we have a raccoon using its physiological knack for hanging to survive. And here we have a human <laughs> falling from a tree. So how do monkeys taunt gravity so in the treetops? Why can sloths spend 90% of their time hanging about in branches? And why must cats always ruin the curtains? The answer, my learned viewers, lies not only in the physics, but in biology. Animals with an arboreal lifestyle tend to be better equipped for hanging about. Whilst we rely solely on our two hands, some animals can spread the force of their weight across four limbs with opposable thumbs on hands and feet. New World monkeys have a muscular prehensile tail which acts as a fifth limb and can grip like an extra hand. Some animals make up for their lack of opposable thumbs with hook-like claws, whilst some non-tree dwellers have powerful jaw muscles to lock themselves in place. Hanging upside down does have its, well, downside. Sloths spend so long the wrong way up that they need special internal adhesions to anchor their guts to their lower ribs or their organs would squash their lungs, which is clever. But squirrel monkeys are cleverer. -er -er. It's hard to believe we share over 90% of our genes with our agile primate cousins. Especially when you see that. We don't have gripping feet or a tail for balance. Maybe he was praying for opposable toes. Speckles here doesn't have opposable thumbs, but she can use her grapple hook-like claws to dig in and break that lovely lamp thing. Cat's curved claws can only help them grip if the object they dig into is well anchored. Otherwise, they're no help at all. That's over 200 pounds of bite force supporting Derek's body weight. In fact, jaw muscles make up a huge percentage of a dog's head, leaving very little space for the brain. Let go! <laughs> so he might be there for a while. Let go! But you don't have to be big-headed, just proportionally so. Harold's relatively powerful jaw means he can support his featherweight body, his featherweight and squishy body. To be fair, if all you ate was sunflower seeds, you'd have big jaws and a tiny body too. Right, it's time to get your lab coats from the locker and get ready for today's science lesson. The part of the show where we place a particular principle under the microscope. Can you guess what it is from the following? An unwisely positioned cannon. A delightful birthday surprise. And a high-pressured basketball game. The connection is the inverse square law. That's a geometric law that describes how the intensity of energy, such as heat, light, electrostatic and sound, is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. That is, it gets drastically less intense over distance. 